Best of luck, Matt. The word grog, when used to describe an alcoholic drink, is particularly associated with which people? Sailors, priests or doctors? Well, um, priests are um, not generally associated with getting particularly drunk. Again, I can't see doctors particularly having a, uh, a specialist word for, uh, for booze, um, and I'm fairly sure that the answer is sailors. Sailors? Yeah, it is, yeah, grog. OK, uh, first question for Kevin. On a Chinese restaurant menu, which word often precedes crispy duck in the name of the dish served with pancakes, cucumber, spring onion and plum or hoisin sauce? Is it smoky, herbed or aromatic? Presumably the other two would both be possible. I don't know, the one you normally see is aromatic. So. Aromatic. Aromatic crispy, crispy duck. duck. Yep, right answer. Back to you, Matt. What French name is given to a veal or pork escalope that is stuffed with Gruyere cheese and ham and then fried in breadcrumbs? Is it Caisse Noire, Liste Rouge or Cordon Bleu? Hmm. Well, Cordon Bleu is a type of cookery, so I don't think that's the right answer. Um, Liste Rouge uh, I'm not familiar with, um, so I'm going to go for Caisse Noire because I think the breadcrumbs, when um, toasted, might go dark. Um, uh, black. OK, seeing the reasoning there, yeah. Case Noir, though, is incorrect. It is. Kevin, you must uh, whistle this up a lot, this dish, your signature dish. What else? Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't... I mean, I, I would have guessed at least Rouge. It's not Cordon Bleu, I don't think so. It, it is Cordon Bleu. Is it? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, but not the right answer from Matt. So a chance for the lead for Kevin. The white wine grape called Riesling is believed to have first been grown in which country? Germany, Portugal or Chile? Well, it's, um, I, it's particularly associated with German wines, so I have to um, do the old playing the percentages here and go for Germany. OK, and that is correct, yes, Riesling, first grown in Germany. So you have a lead and uh, Matt needs to equalise here to keep the round open. Matt, which Scottish term applies to traditional dishes that can be a thin oatmeal porridge or soft creamy cheese? Rock, girdle or crowdy? Hmm. I really don't know the answer again here, actually. Um, girdle and crowdy both sound to me like they could well be uh, types of Scottish food. Um, I think I'm going to go for crowdy. Crowdy? It's the right answer, yes, crowdy. And uh, Kevin then can still take the round if he gets this. The rakyo is a Japanese form of which vegetable? Shallot, carrot or parsnip? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know this. So I don't think I've, don't think I've come across that. Um, I don't know why. I'm, I've, I've got to start ruling them out, so I'll rule out shallot for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> so between carrot and parsnip, well, whichever one I go for, I'm sure it'll be the other one, so I'll go for parsnip. I can tell you uh, it's not the other one either. It's shallot. <laughs> oh, well, so. <laughs> so, so it was academic then. Yeah, third yeah. on the list. Academic yeah. as soon as you said you were ruling it out. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, stays all square. Good news for you, Matt. Bad news is, as I explained to you at the start, we um, go to sudden death and take away those choices. In which country was the aniseed flavoured drink pastis developed during the 1920s and 30s? Well, certainly the, the name is quite French sounding. Um, pastis. I think. Yes, I'm going to say France. OK, France is your answer. And that's the correct answer, yes, France. Pastis Duval. Um, Kevin, which award-winning restaurant in England opened in 1995, was temporarily closed in February 2009 after many diners reported feeling unwell after eating there? I think that was Mr Blumenthal's one, the Fat Duck. The Fat Duck is mm. correct, yes. Well done, Kevin. And uh, on we go. Uh, Matt, another question. Granadilla is another term for which fruit? I don't know why, but I've, I'm going to say pomegranate. Pomegranate for a granadilla or a granadilla. Uh, um, close. Uh, it's not. Kevin, did you have a go, do you know? Persimmon? No. Uh, other eggheads? Passion fruit? Passion fruit. Oh, passion, passion fruit. Yeah. Um, Kevin. The name of which Italian white wine from the Lazio region means it is, it is, it is? Oh, it's est, 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 done with increasing exclamation marks as well. It's the correct answer, mm. Kevin, yes. And just got through a uh, very, very difficult round there. Bad luck, Matt. It means you won't be in the final round. Would you both please come back and join your teams?
Well, uh, one brain missing from the final round for no plan B. All the eggheads still there, of course. And we'll play our next round. This one is film and television. Can't play this. Can't be you, Matt. It's not me. It's got to be Ruth, hasn't it? Oh, I think this is one for Ruth. I think it'll have to be Ruth. I um, think so. Who, who should we play against in chat? CJ? Yes. Give, give CJ a crack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, Ruth and CJ playing film and television, please. So, uh, Ruth, would you like to go first or second? First, please, Demet. First question then, Ruth, who played James Bond in the 1963 film From Russia With Love? Sean Connery, George Lazenby or David Niven? Right. Um, I have seen the recent James Bond films. Um, I, think, I think it might have been uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery for uh, From Russia With Love, the original. It's the right one. Yes, Sean Connery, of course, yes. OK, your first question, CJ. In the 1990 film Ghost, when Molly, played by Demi Moore, says, I love you, what does Patrick Swayze's character reply? Back at you? Ditto? Or likewise? It is actually one of the few films I have seen. I mean, as you know, I'm not a big TV or film watcher, but I do read about them. And I'm ashamed to say it does actually reduce me to tears, this film. Oh, and it's ditto. Sweet of you, CJ. <laughs> it is the right answer, yes, ditto. I love you, the replies, ditto. OK, Ruth. Which hit television drama of the 1990s was devised and co-written by Amy Jenkins? Was it Our Friends in the North, This Life or Prime Suspect? Well, I watched this series and I really enjoyed it, so um, I'm not going to mess around here with the answer. It's This Life. This Life by Amy Jenkins. Yes, is the right answer. And CJ? Who was the narrator of the landmark 1972 TV series entitled America, A Personal History of the United States? Alistair Cook, Kenneth Clark, or Jacob Bronowski? I don't actually know the series, but um, Alistair Cook obviously spent a long time in America with his letters to America. Um, so I will assume this one was done by Alistair Cook. OK. Uh, Alistair Cook is correct then, yes, the link there with the United States. Letter from America. And uh, it's all square. OK, Ruth. In the 2010 film, Everybody's Fine, which actress plays the role of Amy, the daughter of Robert De Niro's character? Is it Kira Knightley, Kate Winslet or Kate Beckinsale? Right, well, I haven't seen this film. Um, and I'm just trying to sort of think who's most likely to look like Robert De Niro's daughter. Um, I'm going to go for... Um, Kate Beckinsale. A novel approach there, acting as, I suppose, as the casting director, who had lit the part as uh, Robert De Niro's daughter. And, uh, well, you think alike, the casting director and you, it's Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> well, you have the lead, and CJ under a bit of pressure. CJ, which Irish director made the 1989 film My Left Foot and the 1993 film In the Name of the Father? Neil Jordan, Douglas Gerrard, or Jim Sheridan? Um, I'm not absolutely sure, but I th I'm going to go for Jim Sheridan. Jim Sheridan? OK. Yes, it is. Well, close there, Ruth. He was um, having to work hard, but he got it in the end. So, uh, as you saw in the previous round, we go to sudden death. In the early 1980s, Henry Kelly, Matthew Kelly, Sarah Kennedy and Jeremy Beadle were the four presenters of which entertainment show? Oh, I ought to know this. Um, I'm sure it's the programme where they played practical jokes on people. Um, I'm going to say You've Been Framed, but I don't think that's what it was called. You've Been Framed? It's not. It's, you're very much on the right track. You more or less described the show. You just couldn't give me the title. CJ? It's Game for a Laugh. Oh, Game yeah. for a Laugh. The two Kellys and uh, Sarah Kennedy and Jeremy Beadle in Game for a Laugh. Well, uh, you did know that. Couldn't work out the name, so CJ has a chance to win. CJ, which 1946 film is set in the fictional town of Bedford Falls? I don't know this. <sighs> I'll assume... F oh, hold on, Bedford Falls. Um, oh, hold on, it's... I think it's... Um, ah! <laughs> It's a Wonderful Life. 
Is that your answer? Yes. It's a Wonderful Life is the right answer, CJ. You've taken the round. It came to you. Well, it was a wonderful round. Bad luck, Ruth. We could easily be continuing there if uh, Game for a Laugh had just come to you. It was on the tip of your tongue. That was the, the difference between you. You just didn't dredge it up. And uh, CJ was nearly going to pass, but uh, he just managed to remember It's a Wonderful Life. So, as a result, he'll be in the final round and no place for you. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, no plan B. If plan A involves losing out to the eggheads by the narrowest of margins in those head-to-heads, then it's working perfectly. <laughs> if it's not that, then perhaps you need a plan C or something like that. Maybe. You've got Maybe. Uh, as it stands, you've lost two brains from the final round. The eggheads are all still there. Two head-to-heads coming up. The next one is geography. And who'd like to play this? Who have we got? Oh, Bernard, Michael, John. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. you you against, Would you fancy playing against? Play against? I think you do this and get in. Yeah. Okay. Don't take on yeah. this. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I think uh, it's time to unveil one of our secret weapons. Uh, I think we're going to have John playing against Judith. All right, John and Judith taking on geography. Into the question room, both, please. Well, John, let's see if we can uh, make you the first member of No Plan B to win through to the final round. Let's see if you can do it in three questions. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll go first, please. Good luck, John. First question. Which European country regards Monte Bianco as its highest mountain? Denmark, Italy or Greece? Uh, well, I've actually been to a ski resort just on the south side of it, and uh, that's Italian for Mount Blanc, so it's Italy. <laughs> yes, very good. Right answer. Judith, in terms of population, what's the largest city in Germany? Hamburg, Cologne or Berlin? Well, I have no idea. Um, well, Berlin's the capital. I suppose it's Berlin. I have a dreadful feeling it might not be there. Anyway, Berlin. Berlin is correct, yes. <laughs> One each, John. The Kingdom of Bahrain is composed of a number of islands in which large body of water? The Red Sea, the Caspian Sea, or the Persian Gulf? Well, my mother actually used to live there for a time. Uh, it's the Persian Gulf. <laughs> Goes on holiday to Montblanc, and his mum used to live in Bahrain, and the Persian Gulf is the right answer. These are falling very nicely for you, John. I don't know what the next question holds, but we'll no doubt get a family link there somewhere. Um, Judith, which term is used for a terrace on a hillside generally thought to be man-made? Is it lahar, lynchet, or levee? Oh, well, it's not a levee, because there's the, those sort of dikey bank things in New Orleans. Um, I think I'm going to go for... lahar, for no real, really good reason that I could explain. I is it other eggheads? No, no. it's a lynchet. It's a lynchet. Lahar is a volcanic mud flow. Volcanic mud flow, lahar. And it's the answer's lynch it. Oh. So, well, that's good news for you, John. You uh, get through to the final round, if you give me a correct answer here. The 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea defined the territorial waters or sea of a country as extending no further than how many nautical miles from its low water shoreline? One, five, or 12? I'm much less sure of this one. However, I have a feeling that the English and French territorial waters in the Channel actually meet, on which grounds it will be 12 nautical miles. I'll go for 12. I thought your cousin or something might have been at that convention. <laughs> Just, uh, you got the right answer anyway. 12 is correct, John. Didn't I say before we started? Three questions, and there he is in the final round. Playing for the money today, John, would you both please come back and join your teams? Celebrate Mother's